Welcome to another episode of Backstage with NNPR. Today we are with Henry James. Henry, how are you, mate? Good, man. How are you, Chris? Yeah, I'm very good, good. mate. Henry from uh, Robert John and the Wreck. That's right. Touring <laughs> all around the country. Yep. UK, Europe. Yep. How's been the it's, tour, mate? It's been great. It's been very successful. We're seeing, you know, more people coming out every night and yeah. coming back to some places and seeing bigger crowds and, yeah. you know, morale's good and we're having a fun time and it's going great. Yeah, and the new album, man. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> we're proud of it, man. So thank you. Yeah. Good. Thank yeah, you. Thank so you. So good, especially your guitar is a, oh, it's thank fantastic. You, thank you. Fantastic. Appreciate that very the, much. The rocky edge of the, <laughs> the album. You. So let's talk about gear. Yeah. Yeah, let's start with the guitars. Sure, sure, sure. So what you got for us? This is uh, the primary number one. I pretty much use this you know, the vast majority of the time. Uh -huh. um, this is in a 2020 Epiphone Firebird. Okay. And I've been using this for a number of years now. And mm -hmm. uh, basically, it just, I picked it up out of the box and it played great. And uh, all I really had to do was put these Seymour Duncan uh, vintage wind, you know, mini humbuckers in it. Okay. So these are just the standard low output mini humbuckers Seymour Duncan makes. Uh -huh. And then this is a Graph Tech bridge. And then this is a Duesenberg, Les Tram, and um, yeah, and then and then I kind of you know I like these these witch hat knobs, so I put these witch hat knobs here for cool. an aesthetic purpose. But yeah, this is kind of the main live sound basically, yeah. and you know just does the fire. It's cool, nice. good guitar, yeah, yeah. So do you feel any difference, of course, part of the sound, but like playing ability? From mini humbuckers to the humbuckers, because I know you you play SGs as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you how do you yeah. manage these? Um, this one I find it it works really well in conjunction, especially in a two guitar band. You know? Okay. And uh, I I picked up these kind of as a result of like Alan Collins from Lyndon Skinner. You know, I, yeah. I was really really fascinated with with the sound he had going on. Mm -hmm. And um, although I know the specs on his are completely different, it still does that thing. It cuts through and it sits in a mix and it blends with another guitar especially yep, really yep. well and uh but i i use this in in a power trio too and it it sounds great with that too so it's just mm -hmm. it's just got a a lot of versatility to it and you can get you know pseudo strat like stuff with it and yep. you can also get gibson like tones out uh -huh. of it but it has a little bit more subtlety and cut to it and a little bit more chime and clarity mm -hmm. and i find that i like that more than uh, full size humbuckers generally for, okay. for most things. Cool. Yeah. Can we hear a little bit more yeah. Yeah, yeah, of this baby? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Another one? Make, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, let's so, do it. That's kind of the, the main baby. Uh-huh. And then uh, right here, if I'm feeling like I want a little bit of a different sound, this one comes out. Ooh. And this is an Eastman Juliet. Okay. And uh, sometimes, I sometimes you know, there's some nights where I find I, I do prefer this. Um, do it's, you usually change this guitars? Uh, from uh, some songs? Yeah, there are, or... there are some songs in the set where I do actually prefer this. Um, or I, you know, the other thing too is it's, is it's just so I can uh, minimize, you know, the amount of, of string where I give to each guitar so that I can okay. kind of, and then also just, I'm always kind of like thinking about how to make things sound a little different and how to, how to not get bored of the same sound. Okay. I'm always kind of tweaking stuff. So this is kind of, it's kind of a palette cleanser, I guess. Mm -hmm. I switch between the two to kind of yeah, cleanse yeah, yeah. my palette. And this one's got, you know, P90s in it. P90s. I believe these are bare knuckle P90s. Bare knuckle. Uh, great blue peacocks. set in neck. And then, uh, yeah, it's just, it's a great guitar. It's really comfortable and really light. Too. Right. I love the contour on it, but it's, it's very cool. <laughs> So 
good, man. It's a good one. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Sounds it's amazing. Cool. And then Robert obviously has his counterpart, Juliet, with the humbuckers. So oh, okay. it's always a cool visual thing on stage uh -huh. when he's playing his and I play mine. We're doing, you know, our guitar harmonies and stuff oh, like that. Okay. So I like to bring it out for that, too. That's great. Yeah, it's, a, it's a great guitar. It's a really, really great guitar. And um, I, these are some of the first models they they had in Europe and Eastman was kind enough to let us take them on a tour. And, oh, so cool. And now they're, they're ours because <laughs> we put too much buckle rash on them. Um, and then this is a, a 2004 okay. Gibson SG okay. 61 reissue standard. Oh, beautiful. In the classic cherry mm -hmm. finish. Yep. Um, this one, my buddy, shout out to my buddy Soli in mm -hmm. France. Okay. These are his pickups from his company, Hepcat Pickups. Nice. These are the full Bucker 59 pickups. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're just good, you know, good old fashioned, slightly overwound uh, PAF style pickups. Nice. And this guitar, I, I have it, let's make sure we're in tune here. I have it set up in, in open E. Open E. For slide stuff. Um, mm hmm. I find that Dwayne Allman and, and Derek Trucks were, were really on to something and uh, the formula just works and with the with the upper fret access, it's just a really great yeah. slide guitar. It uh -huh. really sounds right at home doing that stuff and especially in the open E tuning, um, sounds really great. I have it capoed because usually we start our sets with a song called Pay No More, which okay. is off the new, new album. Uh -huh. Good man, yeah. And these, um, this the, the slide, slide, of is... course, yes. Yeah. So this is a Ernie Ball comfort um, slide, size small. I have tiny little baby pinkies, okay. <laughs> and I can't find any slides that fit my finger except for this one. Uh -huh. And uh, when I used to use, I used to have a guy make even glass slides mm -hmm. to fit my tiny finger, uh -huh. and I would just break them all the time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would just drop them and forget I had them and break them all the time. So I, I lost my glass slide privileges. So now I use this and it works great and uh, it's a wonderful product and it's got this wonderful, I think it's just rubber in here or something okay. that, that just sits really well. Sits it doesn't well. fall off. I do a yeah. lot of work where I'm, I'm you know, playing parts as well or cording or whatever. So I have to keep the pinky as the sliding finger yeah. and the other three fingers free. Nice. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. Sounds that's, so that's good. Three. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Yeah, it's so good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cool. It's a good one. Let's talk about amps. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So I, like a pair this of... is kind of going to be basically segueing directly into the pedals because it all works like that. So basically yeah. what I got going on here is for, for the Europe rig, um, these are the backline amps from our company, Teenage Head Music, uh -huh. that I use. And this one is a Supro Titan. It's a little 1x10. 50 watt combo actually okay so it's deceptively loud has a lot of clean headroom which is great and then this is the 25 watt 1 by 12 black magic mm -hmm. uh, you're running both at the I'm same time running both at the same time at all times uh -huh. and it's controlled by i think this is how it's yeah so that's the titan that's the black magic and then together Really nice, like yeah. they sound completely the, different. The, the 10 and the yeah, 12 then. has a thing about it that really complements each other. Uh -huh. And uh, so it's the same thing, I same kind of formula I use back home. I use different amps back home in the States. Uh -huh. But it's the same thing, it's a 10 and a 12, two combo amps. And it works wonderfully, it sounds really good. And so basically this little so, orange ABY box okay. takes the signal from the big board Splits it into stereo, and then I have okay. a, a myriad of stereo effects, which we'll get to. Splits the signal into these two amps. So you're running stereo all the time. Technically, yeah, yeah. technically stereo. Now, all of the, there's no wet dry or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just, these are technically stereo capable delays cool. and reverbs. Um, but Love before it. we yeah. get into that, yeah. okay. we'll start with uh, this thing. And I'm gonna just do a quick switch over real yep. quick. Um, 
Maybe we can cut there. <laughs> uh, then How about your influence? Like, I see there's Jim Hendrix. Oh, yeah, I love Jim yeah. Hendrix. He's my, he is my guy. He's been my guy since I was probably 13 years old. Okay. And has never, never really stopped being my guy. I always find a new recording of him that, that uh -huh. just makes my jaw drop. And um, all his studio albums were so, you know, huge and impactful. Exactly. And, and just, just total face-melting amazing stuff. So basically, uh, goes from guitar. First thing in, this, in the chain is this exotic wah wah. Uh, and then that goes into a Walrus Audio Kangra. So that has both a, an Octavia. Also an envelope filter. And then uh, then we go into this little loop switcher down here. Okay. First up is a is a pog. And I just have that for just a octave down setting. Then we have the silk tone fuzz, which is a wonderful fuzz face. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard some that sound really great but you can't get them to be consistent, and this one is remarkably this one, consistent, yeah. and it just always has that. <laughs> and then uh, full tone deja vibe, because you gotta do. And then my always on is this Wampler Plexi Drive. So you're always hearing that. Without that, on. without that, the amps are more or less clean, kind of on the edge of breakup, basically. And it just gives us a good foundation so we can kind of have some headroom to play with. Um, this is a very dynamic band. Uh -huh. So when I take a solo, uh, it's very important that I get louder. Um, and occasionally, if I want a different sound, I will go to this Tumnus. Okay. What I found when I added it to the board, I think the buffer in it just made things sound a little sweeter. So it just, it just adds that. I don't use it too much, but if I want a different sound, I'll use it. And okay. then this is the JHS Solo Boost, which uh -huh. I was able to sneak in because it was a limited edition pedal. And I saw he oh, posted man. it, so I was like, I was like, so just, you know. It's a full, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a This full is a clean boost, yeah. Range boost. And then uh, this is a Supra tremolo. Just for those nice, you know, slower passages, more textural things. Uh -huh. I find the tremolo is really complimentary to this style of music. Nice. So now we go into the B board, basically. Um, from the orange amp, we split off the B signal into this carbon copy. And I have okay. this set up for a very, very slow delay mm -hmm. with the high mix so that you kind of get, here's. Kind of thickens it up uh -huh. and it simulates like a double track thing. Yeah, I'm yeah. a really big fan of doubling guitars in the studio. So I find with important parts, you know, important riffs. It just, it just gives a little more. This thickens it up a little bit. That's yeah, yeah, that yeah. dimensional quality of kind of a double track thing. Mm -hmm. Then we go into the Boss Space Echo, which I have hooked up to this little expression pedal here, so I can kind of. Just kind of go through two settings. I have basically the wash thing, 
Uh -huh. And then my <laughs> typical, you know, just, just standard uh, sort of shorter delay, basically. Mm -hmm. And then this is the R1 by Walrus Audio. It's just a little, you know, spring. So this without it. And then this kind of a little, this is a spring reverb. This one's cool because you have a couple presets. So this uh -huh. is the main oh. preset I use. And you can just do that and get the second one. This is the second one. It's a longer like plate uh -huh. reverb. And then this one's fun. It's called the, the refract setting. <laughs> like a, a pad or something like that to uh -huh. fill time. Just goes forever. <laughs> Just leave it there. Just leave it there and go. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. Nice. That's that's basically the rig. I mean it's it's kind of this idea of like all the effects that don't have to do with time and then all and then the fun spatial stuff like and you Always running these two pedal boards. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. This always. is the first tour I've done this, and um, I don't think I can go back now because it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too much fun. It's just too much fun. You can you can't have like too many. I, pedals I bring like. the psychedelic side to this southern rock band, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and we like it that way. I think. Nice. And for the the monitors, you use in ears monitors not, like wedges. I'm or? not. I just use a wedge. wedge. I just have a wedge. I just run my vocals through the wedge. Okay. Because uh, I sing the the higher backup vocals usually. Uh huh. So yeah, and uh, and yeah, no no inner monitors yet. Maybe someday I'll make that switch. But right now it's just the whatever the four monitor they got. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And um, the strings that strings. you use, like, yeah. These are, these are Ernie Ball 10 to 46. 10 to 46. Um, I like just, just made some friends over at Ernie Ball, and they hooked me They're up great, with some. So yeah. thank you guys, Ernie Ball, for hooking me up with this stuff. Um, yeah. 10 to 46 on this guy, 10 to 46 on this guy. And then this, I use GHS boomers because they make a gauge that fits perfectly uh, uh, tension-wise for open E tuning. Okay. The middle strings are just a little bit lighter in relation to the other ones. So I use the 11 to 50 boomer sets on my slide guitar, opening slide cool. guitar. Picks, this, hands, I saw, I saw you be like. I, I do a bit of the finger tuck yeah. technique where I kind of let it sit in the middle finger. Yeah. Um, this one's the best way to see it. I use these picks. They're made Ooh. by my buddy Greg Atkin nice. back in Anaheim, California. They're called the Strum and Comfort. And he was kind enough to make me some with my ah, signature on it. So cool. So I've got my own pick now, which is cool. The Henry James Signature Kodiak. Um, I use both 0.8 and 0.6, depending on how my hands feel. Okay. And uh, yeah, strummingcomfort.com. Greg Atkin, great guy. Lovely. Yep. Harry, thank you so much. Thank you, man. For having it's us. been a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Hope you enjoy the show tonight. Thank you. We will. Bristol, yeah, we gotta get our sound song. check going. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool, man. See you. Thank you, man. Soon. Appreciate it. That's it, guys. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. <laughs> See you in the next one. See ya. <laughs>